Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'll give us just a few more moments till we get started. All right, thank you so much for joining us. We have lots of sessions between now and November 6th. So if there's any other sessions you'd like to join, please sign up. You can find all of our offerings at packact.org slash virtual, as well as a recording of tonight's session and all of our sessions again at packact.org slash virtual. My name is Andrea Castle Bretz. I'll be um, with you today, um, and then I'll pass it over to our presenter who will talk about Susquehanna University. Just a little bit about PAC Act. We are the Pennsylvania Association for College Admission Counseling. We have 1,200 members. They are high school counselors, college counselors, independent education consultants, basically all the people who really want to help you find um, your way and um, into post-secondary education. Um, you can um, well, you can't use your mic or your video camera tonight. There is a Q&A box. So any questions you have, please feel free to type them in. They will be answered most likely verbally. And if we, for some reason, don't get them to them tonight, uh, we will make sure that we email you the answers later. So without further ado, I am going to pass it along. Awesome. Thank you so much, Andrea. I am going to share my screen and with all of you. So thank you all so much for coming this evening, for taking the time out of your day to listen to a little bit more information about Susquehanna University. So my name is Nicola Haggerty. I am a counselor here at Susquehanna, and I also am a very proud Susquehanna University alumni. So for about the next 45 minutes, I'm going to be talking to you about all the behind the scenes of what makes up Susquehanna University. Like Andrea said, please feel free to utilize the q and I'd really like to make sure that I can answer your questions. And if I am unable to answer your questions during this time span, time span please do not fret. Um, I'm, I'm going to get the questions after this session and I will make sure that I follow up in an email response to all of you. So in talking about Susquehanna University, just to start off, what you're going to college for, academics, and kind of what that looks like here at Susquehanna. So here at Susquehanna, our academics are broken into three components. So they're three pronged. Our first piece of our academics would be our major classes. So the classes that you will take to ensure that you fulfill your degree within your four years here at Susquehanna. We actually have all of that on our website. So if you have the opportunity to go and look at Susquehanna University majors and minors, and you click on the major that you are interested in studying, there'll be tabs mid page, and you can actually look at every class that you'll be taking within your four years to fulfill your degree. The second piece of our academics would be our central curriculum. It's your entry level history, entry level math, entry level science. However, Susquehanna is actually not set up that way at all. So when we were doing our curriculum review, we actually polled our alumni. There are a variety of different employers, companies, corporations doing very, very, very different things in the workforce and said, what kind of skill sets are you looking for your incoming employees to have? Surprisingly enough, they did not say entry level history, entry level math, and entry level science. Instead, they said things like, we want our employees to be able to work really successfully in diverse working environments, to be able to communicate effectively in oral and written communication, to be able to work really successfully in a team, but also work really successfully independently. And so we built our central curriculum around that for a comprehensive arts and sciences with a focus on professional preparation for a lifetime of personal and professional success. So our central curriculum is extremely focused on skill development. Here are some categories, just to name a few, so human interaction, writing intensive courses, team intensive courses, analytical thought, and then within each category is a variety of classes from a variety of different majors and programs, so you have a lot of flexibility to be taking classes that you're actually passionate about, rather than just taking classes to check them off a list to make sure you graduate in that four-year time span. This setup also allows for a lot of our undecided students to be taking a variety of different classes within a variety of different departments to help them figure out kind of what major and what passion they have. 
but also this allows for a lot of students to double major, pick up an additional minor, maybe more than one, pretty successfully also in that four year time span. So this is a very popular um, setup among our students. And this also allows for students to consistently be meeting new people um, throughout the entirety of their four years. Because our student to faculty ratio is 13 to one, with our average class size being 19 students. So you're definitely having the opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one interaction with your professors and other faculty members. Um, and they're really gonna get to know who you are as a student, not just you within their class, but also what you're interested in doing post Susquehanna, also what clubs, organizations, sports teams, what you might be involved in on campus. They're going to know all of those things to be able to get to know and assist you best as a student. We are also in the top 10 of colleges and universities recognized by the Council on Undergraduate Research for student participation in the National Research Conference. So the, another really big thing about Susquehanna's academics with those two components is over your four years, if you're just sitting in a classroom and being lectured every day for four years, when you go into that first job, first graduate program, internship, whatever that may be, you're going to struggle if you only have the knowledge base but don't know how to apply the knowledge that you've learned and let it sink in a little bit. So that is something that Susquehanna really focuses on. So 90% of our students will have at least one internship or research experience during their four years here. It is a part of the culture that's been set up here at Susquehanna, that that's really important to students as well as the staff that's here is making sure that students are having opportunities to be able to apply the knowledge that they are learning. Um, so you can start doing research at Susquehanna your first semester, your first year. You don't have to take two years of entry level courses within your major to then have the skill set to be allowed to do research. That is not the case here at all, um, because the more opportunities that you have right off the bat, the more opportunities that you'll get to have over that time span, because you might graduate with multiple different research opportunities or internships that you've had as well. So that's a really big priority here at Susquehanna. So with those pieces being the two pieces of our academic program, the third and final piece would be your electives courses. So say you really enjoy graphic design or um, playing a musical instrument or singing in the choir or performing in a theater production, but you do not wanna be um, majoring or minoring in one of those things, but you wanna make sure it's a part of your Susquehanna experience. You absolutely would have the opportunity to do that, to take those elective courses, to be involved in those ensembles and still graduate in a four year time span and be able to take the classes that you need to be taking as well. Throughout this presentation, there's also going to be some photos. Um, so this particular photo is of Dr. Jonathan Niles on the right hand side in the gray t shirt with a student doing research in the Susquehanna River and the surrounding creek areas around Sealands Grove. So Dr. Jonathan Niles works within our Earth and Environmental Science Department, and he's also the head of the Freshwater Research Institute on campus. So again, working a lot with our students that are interested in ecology as well as Earth and Environmental Studies and Sciences um, to be able to have those hands on experiences like we were talking about. And like I was saying before, with those professors, with those smaller class sizes, having the opportunity to really get to know who you are as a person, not just you as a student, they wear a variety of different hats and are going to be involved in a variety of different facets of your Susquehanna experience. So Dr. Jonathan Niles is also the head coach of the men's club rugby team here at Susquehanna. Um, so again, just a way that they wear a variety of different hats. He's also a faculty advisor here at Susquehanna. And what a faculty advisor is, is every student is given a faculty advisor when they come to Susquehanna and it's their advisor for all four years. So they are within your department of study. So you're always working with someone that excels in the field that you would like to be in. So not only do they assist you with your courses and make sure that you're taking the right classes at the right times during your time here, but also they're your first networking connection. They have been working with many alumni that are exactly in the same shoes as you are that can help you with research opportunities as well as internships and job opportunities post-graduation as well. Um, so they have those variety of abilities and resources to be able to assist you. If you ever had an additional major, an additional minor, you would have an additional faculty advisor. So again, always working with somebody that excels in the field that you'd like to be in. Every single one of your professors also has guaranteed open office hours every week. So again, just another resource so that you have the ability, maybe you're talking about a challenging topic that week, or maybe you have a homework assignment and you have a five second question and you wanna pop in and ask your professor, you absolutely have the flexibility and ability to do so. I um, mean, go into their open office hours so that you could work with them and get that extra assistance. Next, um, this is a picture within our Sigmund Y School of Business within our Bloomberg terminals. Um, so our Sigmund Y School of Business here at Susquehanna is AACSB accredited. What that means is our business school is within the top 5% of business schools across the entire United States. There's the same accreditation as Harvard Business School. Um, and also many of the schools of that 5% 
There's only a few that are liberal arts institutions because they typically do not have the resources available to receive the accreditation. So we have a very, very strong business program here at Susquehanna. Um, this is a picture of two students, like I said, within our, in using our Bloomberg terminals. So this is a part of an upper level course that students can take called the River Hawk Fund. And as a part of that class, they actually get to invest a small percentage of the Susquehanna University money. So that's a really awesome and unique opportunity to be able to have during your four years here as well. Again, that hands-on experience is so crucial and so important to our students to have that experience before they graduate as well. If you have any questions about anything regarding academics, please feel free to put that in the Q&A if they're major specific or anything like that so I can chat about that with you. I'm going to move on to the next piece, but if you have questions, please feel free to put those in. So another huge piece of the academics here at Susquehanna is actually 100% of our students study away on six of the seven continents and more than 125 global opportunities or GO programs. So there are a variety of different ways to complete this requirement. But yes, 100%, you read that statistic correct. So let me break that down a little bit for you. So as a part of the Global Opportunities Program, there are three different ways to complete this requirement. So go long, go short, and go your way. Go long would be that typical semester abroad. Go short would be two to four weeks over your summer or your winter break. And go your way would be say that there was somewhere that you really wanted to go that we did not already have a program as a part of our 125 programs. Then you would have the opportunity to work with our Global Opportunities Office and with the advising that we have. And as long as you crafted your program and everything fit all of their criteria for a cross-cultural immersive experience, you would be able to study away in that area. Now, why are 100% of our students doing that? Why is that a part of our curriculum here at Susquehanna? Well, right now, as I'm sure you know, it's going to be really important for you to be a global citizen post your college career, because no matter what company, corporation, career field that you're going into, you're gonna be working with people that grew up very differently than you, that have very different mindsets and backgrounds. So it's really important to be able to be a global, cultural competent citizen with everybody that you're going to be working with. And that's a very lofty goal if you don't have a program in place to assist with that, which is how the Global Opportunities Program was formed. So like I said, this is a part of our academic program. So every single one of our 125 programs has an academic or a service component associated with it, and they'll be advertised with the program. We also have international as well as domestic options for students that are not as interested in leaving the country. Um, one of our most popular programs is Go Hawaii, which is about three weeks long, um, and that's a service-based trip. And as a part of that trip, what's really unique about it is although maybe you would have been to Hawaii on a family vacation, um, and although all these trips will feel like vacations, this trip is actually led by Dr. Tom, a professor within our chemistry department, as well as her husband, Coach Tom, who is our volleyball coach here at Susquehanna. And Coach Tom is actually a Hawaiian native. So you'll be going to areas of Hawaii and seeing places that you never would have been exposed to necessarily if you'd gone on like a family vacation to this area. Um, students can complete these Global Opportunities programs at any point during their four years. However, on average, if students are going for a semester, they go the fall or their spring of their junior year. And if they're going for a go short, so the two to four week program, they go the summer before their junior year, the winter of their junior year, or the summer before their senior year are the most common times that students are completing these programs. To bookend the experience, we actually have, again, with that academic component, is a pre-study away course as well as a post-reflection course for every single one of our programs as well. So the pre-study away course is doing just that, preparing you to study away. Um, some of the countries you might be going to, their first language might not be English. They might have a totally different type of religious beliefs, food, culture. So making sure you're as prepared as possible for this new area, because for many of our students, they're going to areas or leaving um, the country for the first time or maybe leaving the state for the first time. So that's really beneficial to our students to have that kind of a preparation. It also allows for you to meet everyone that you're studying away with, because the group sizes are about 14 to 19 students as well. So again, feeling very comfortable with everyone that you're going with. And all of our Go Short programs are completely faculty advisor led. So that way you can meet the faculty member that will be leading your experience as well, so you feel very comfortable going with them. And then the reflection course that happens once you return from your trip, did you know how to market your experience? Because you've had that academic component where maybe you were taking classes or had a research opportunity while you were there, or you're on a service trip, being able to talk about that eloquently in a job interview, in a cover letter, in a resume, is going to be so beneficial for you in that next step. And it really has made our Susquehanna students stand apart um, from other recent graduates that might be applying for the same kinds of positions. So here are some pictures in here. Um, so in this particular photo, kneeling down on the right-hand side wearing the hat, is Dr. Richards, and he leads a trip in Nepal um, studying Sherpa culture. And this is actually them hiking to base camp one and Mount Everest. So that's a really unique trip that students like to participate in. 
Here's another trip of students riding some camels um, in Morocco. So another really interesting opportunity for students. When I was a student at Susquehanna, I was very blessed to be able to go on a service experience to Greece, and I went to Athens, Santorini, and Crete. Best three weeks of my life, 10 out of 10 would recommend going to Greece. Um, but that was a really phenomenal and impactful program because we worked in, with a nonprofit organization located within Athens, working with an organization that assisted um, people that were coming to Greece seeking asylum. So that was a really profound and impactful trip for me to be able to have that kinds of experience as well. So this is a huge part of our Susquehanna experience during your four years here away from campus that students will all participate in and have that shared experience even though they're going to very different areas. So that's also a common ground for students um, that they're able to talk about and feel comfortable really participating in this trip as well. And if you have any questions about the Global Opportunities Programs, please feel free to throw those in the Q&A now. So now that I've talked about what you're going to be doing away from campus during your four years, what's it like on campus during your four years? So we do have 2,300 approximately students here at Susquehanna. We are an undergraduate institution and we come from 30 states and 31 countries. So a wide array of students are coming to Susquehanna. About 50% of our student population does come from Pennsylvania. The other 50% breaks up um, those other 29 states and 31 countries as well. So we are a residential campus. So although we do have a very small commuter population, other than our commuters, 100% of students live on campus all four years. So we have guaranteed housing all four years, which is something that Susquehanna students really appreciate as well. And if you would like to see kind of pictures of what those look like, please feel free to head to our website, our residence like page, and you can see some photos on there about what that looks like for students. You may have a car on campus all four years. It's $35 for the year. So very inexpensive. However, only about 50% of students have a car on campus. This school provides on Saturdays a free shopping shuttle that goes to the grocery store, um, the movie theater, the shopping plaza, so students can very easily take advantage of that and it runs for a couple hours. I did that many times as a student, very, very easy to use in that way as well. Um, so what is there to do? What is there to keep busy? So Susquehanna is definitely a, considered a rural campus. Um, however, we do have a lot going on here. So with students living on campus all four years, that also provides for students and especially coming from the 30 states and 31 countries, for us to be a residential campus in a way that we're not what many would consider a backpack campus. So what that means at 4.05 p.m. on Friday when classes are over, there's a mass exodus of students leaving campus to go home for the weekend. That is not the case here. There is so much going on here, especially with our 150 active student clubs and organizations. Um, so just to name a few, we have a lot of service organizations. We have social Greek life for students that are interested in that. We have um, SU Paranormal Club and we have um, SU Beekeeping Club. We were one of the first bee campuses in Pennsylvania. And this was purely a student interest. So about four years ago, um, students noticed that there was a bee decline in the surrounding area. And like I said, we're a little bit more rural. So we have some farms in the surrounding area. So students actually work with their local farmers um, for the bees to pollinate their crops. And they actually sell the honey right here on campus. And it's absolutely delicious. So again, this was just purely off of a student interest um, and they brought it to campus. There's a lot of institutional support for students to be able to do that. At the beginning of every semester, there's a huge clubs and organizations fair where students can just peek around and see what there is to do and sign up for whatever they'd like. This is open to students all four class years because at Susquehanna, we understand that you're going to be passionate about very different things from your first year to your senior year. Um, so giving you lots of opportunities to get involved in whatever you're passionate about. There's also something called the Weekender. And what it is, is it's an email blast that goes to every student's email on Wednesdays. And it lists every activity that's happening on campus for that coming week. So whether that be a club or organization event, a sports team event, a speaker that's coming to campus, whatever it may be, you will have full accessibility to all of that information. So you always know what's going on and what there is to do. So we also are about three and a half hours from a lot of major cities. So Philadelphia, Washington, DC, New York City, um, and Harrisburg. So for students that wanna to go to places like that. We also are about an hour from Knoebels, which is an amusement park that's free admission and free parking. So you only have to pay if you go on rides to get food. So you can walk around like I do and just eat funnel cake and that is um, totally a fun thing that students participate in. The university also provides a lot of day trips for students for opportunities for them to get a little bit off campus and go to new things. So they'll have trips to New York City to see a Broadway show. They'll have trips to Knoebels. There is a roller skating rink nearby. So they'll do trips to that with a discounted rate for students and they'll provide transportation. So students can go to that. So there's always something going on here. Also, we have Tracks, which is our on-campus entertainment venue that has events every weekend. So they brought in um, different musicians. They've had ball pit parties, silent discos, even Mario Kart battles. So all different kind of events for students to participate in there. 
as well as the student activities committee that has events. So they brought in like food trucks, they have bubble soccer where you get the big plastic balls and you bump into each other. Um, and they've also had events where they bring in bulb obstacle courses. And my personal favorite is the petting zoos. So this particular event that you see a photo of, of the two students on a roller coaster ride, this actually was not taken at Knobles. This photo was taken right on campus. So a really popular event for our students is called Spring Carnival. And it happens right after classes end in the spring before finals begin. There's something called reading days. And what they are are days for you to study for your finals, meet with your professors, go to their review sessions, and have a lot of time to be able to study and feel like you're very prepared. However, everybody needs a break every little once in a while. So overnight, there is a carnival with carnival rides, carnival games, and carnival food set up in our tracks, our entertainment venues parking lot. And for a couple of hours, it's free for students to attend. You can just go and decompress and relax with your friends, win a goldfish for your room. So that when you go back to studying, you feel really refreshed and ready to go for that. Now that I've talked about a little bit on campus what there is to do, we do have a lot of family owned businesses and shops about a half mile away from campus. So places like the Wicked Dog Grill, which makes gourmet hot dogs, it's owned and operated by Susquehanna alumni, but also places like the Kind Cafe, which is a really relaxing location and has coffees, teas, milkshakes, salad sandwiches. That's a really popular location for students that want to get a little bit off campus in a new atmosphere and study and hang out with friends. That is a highly frequented location. Um, but also BJ's Oyster Bar, which has a phenomenal bongo bongo dip, um, which is very similar to a spinach and artichoke dip that our students are absolutely in love with. The Susquehanna River is about a mile away. So students, if they like to go on runs or just like to go for a walk and a little bit off campus um, and new scenery just to relax, that's a really popular thing that students will be doing is walking up and down the river. And then within about a five minute drive away from campus, there's a lot of the larger scale companies and corporations that you know and love. So you have a Chipotle, Mod Pizza, Target, Longhorn Steakhouse, Old Navy, Five Below, places like that are very close to campus for students as well to take advantage of. And again, if you have any questions about student life, please feel free to put those into the Q&A. We do have 23 NCAA Division III intercollegiate sports here at Susquehanna as well. Um, so if you are interested in playing on a sport here at Susquehanna and you have not already been into contact with a coach, if you go to suriverhawks.com, there is a button that says recruit. Click on the sport that you're interested in and fill out the recruit form so that the coach is made aware that you are interested. Um, so on top of our Division III intercollegiate sports, we are part of the Landmark Conference. However, for football, we are part of the Centennial Conference. We also have a variety of intramural and club sports for students that are still interested in being involved with athletics, but not at a varsity level. Some of our most popular are men's and women's rugby, as well as our ultimate frisbee team um, and our equestrian teams as well for students to be involved in. So you can be involved in those at any point. Maybe your first year, you just want to focus on your academics, see what that time commitment is like and do it a little bit later. You absolutely have full flexibility to be able to do that as well. So moving into the next really big piece. So like I was saying, your professors are really going to get to know who you are as a person, not just as a student. Um, and with that 2,300 students and being a residential campus, there is a huge community and family dynamic that has been set up here at Susquehanna. Um, that is one of the biggest things where if you ask a current student what their favorite part of Susquehanna is, that's what it is, is the family and community dynamic that's been set up here with people supporting each other, but not only just students supporting students, but faculty, staff, administration, students, Seal and Scrub community all supporting one another. So with that family dynamic comes traditions. So traditions are huge here. Um, one that is very popular with our students, as well as is my personal favorite, is the picture that we see right here. So this is Thanksgiving dinner. And what this is, is the week before Thanksgiving break is Everett Dining Room is completely decked out in really fancy silverware and linens. And you get to sign up for a table with your friends and everybody gets really dressed up. And you go to Everett Dining Room and get to celebrate Thanksgiving and be thankful for your SU family before you go home to your family. I and mean, what's really great about this event is your faculty and staff and administration actually feed you and your friends Thanksgiving dinner. So President Green cuts the turkey. It's very interesting having your math professor hand you mashed potatoes, but that's a fun dynamic as well. In the, this particular picture, um, the gentleman on the left hand side that is handing these students who are very excited about the pumpkin pie. This is our provost, Dame Branzarin. So again, very involved with our students. Um, just to name a few others, Spring Carnival is a really popular tradition, as well as Air Band, which is a Greek dance competition that's held in the spring. There's lots of videos on YouTube. Feel free to check those out. Um, but also, To Us the Night Before Finals is really popular, and that happens right before finals in the fall semester. And what it is, is students get dressed up in their pajamas, and there's cookies and hot chocolate and milk and President Green reads you a bedtime story. So again, these fun traditions that just allow you to relax and decompress with your friends for a little bit so you can feel very refreshed to go back to studying. 
So now that we've talked about what you're going to be doing academically with the Global Opportunities Program, as well as student life here at Susquehanna, it's really important that college is preparing you for what is next and making sure that you are as prepared as possible for that next step. So we are very proud of the fact that 96% of our alumni are working full time or pursuing advanced degrees within six months of graduation. Um, within our Sigmund Y School of Business, it's actually 98% of alumni are working full time or pursuing advanced degrees. So those are percentages that we are really proud of. And among all of the things that I've mentioned about why those, that is the case, there's also two really important offices on campus that all students um, should definitely utilize that assist with this as well. So the first one being the Center for Academic Success that focuses on your academic success during your four years here. The, there is professional staff that work in this office that are assisting students with their transition to college. So not only do they um, offer different study habits for students that maybe the study tips and tricks you were using in high school are proving to be as effective in college and you need some new suggestions, maybe with organization or time management, because for many students, this is their first time ever living away from home. So making sure they're as prepared as possible with those resources. This is also home to the Office of Disability Services for students that need those resources, as well as a math center and a writing center are located within this office. Although the math center and the writing center are located within this office, there is departmental tutoring for every single department on campus that you have full access to, um, even if that is not within your major specifically. So if you're taking some of those central curriculum, those categorical requirement classes that are outside of your major, you still have full access to that tutoring to make sure that you are achieving your highest level of academic success. So just to reiterate, not only do you have the Center for Academic Success, you also have your faculty advisor and your professor's open office hours, as well as your small tight-knit classes. So you have an abundance of resources to make sure that you are achieving your highest level of academic success in those ways as well. Then directly across the hall from this office is the Career Development Center. So the Career Development Center is focused on helping you best during your four years to be prepared for that next step, whether that be the Army, a graduate program, a job, a Peace Corps, whatever that may be, making sure that you're as prepared as possible. So this office is a melting pot of different resources. Not only will they review your resume, go over your cover letter, they offer mock interviews, they have Skype capability, um, but also they have networking trips on campus and off campus. So off campus, they have trips in Philadelphia, Washington DC, State College, and New York City. And as a part of these trips, is there a full day long? It's free for students to sign up for them and the school will provide transportation. And in the morning, you see the behind the scenes of a company or corporation of your choice out of a list of alumni that have volunteered to bring students in and you go and you get to see what they're all about. And in the afternoon, every student from every location and alumni from all over the city meet up and have a speed networking event and with a reception. So you have an abundance of opportunities to meet alumni that graduated six months prior, 60 years prior, and everything in between. And what's really beneficial about these networking trips as well is they are open to you all four years. So you have the opportunity to go to one every single year because although you might not be looking for an internship or a job until your junior or senior year, if you've gone every year and have had the opportunity to meet an alumni that you've really connected with, and then you apply for a job or an internship at that company or corporation, that is going to get your foot into the door. Um, and that is something that Susquehanna really understands is making those connections. It's what's going to help you post-graduation. And then the networking trips on campus, they bring about 100 alumni back to campus to interact with our students. And they also have a variety of different panels. One of my personal favorites is where they have a panel and it's four alumni that they have brought back from a variety of different class years that all graduated with the exact same major that are all doing very different things. Because it's very easy when you have one major to pigeonhole yourself and go, okay, well then here's the six things that I can do because this is my major, when that is not the case because of the applicable skills that you have been able to gain with your Susquehanna education, with those central curriculum categorical requirements that have been so focused on professional preparation and skill development. Um, so those are just a few resources that that office can provide for you with the connections that they're able to make for you for internships, um, as well as research opportunities and graduate programs as well. Here is just to name a few of our recent internships, graduate and professional schools and employers of our students. However, if you go into your specific major, like I was talking about earlier, with those majors and minors, and you click on your major, they have some specific ones for your particular department as well on that website. Again, please feel free to put any questions in the Q&A that you might have about Susquehanna. So the next piece, and the part I know you were all waiting for, application requirements and what that looks like. So here at Susquehanna, we accept the common application as well as the Susquehanna success application. If you're already applying to schools via the common application, highly, um, highly recommend, excuse me, that you apply that way just because it's very, very easy for you. There is a $0 application fee to apply to Susquehanna. So nothing standing in your way there. We also need your official high school transcript, as well as your ACT or SAT scores. 
We do super score here at Susquehanna. So if you take it a couple times, we'll always take your best scores. We want it to help you, not hurt you. However, we are test optional and we have been test optional for over 20 years. So you do not need to worry about that, especially with um, the way the world is right now. Many of them have been canceled. So you can absolutely apply to Susquehanna test optional. We also need at least one letter of recommendation from a counselor or a teacher. However, you can send as many as you would like, as well as a personal essay. Um, if you're applying via the common application, that is the essay. There's not an additional supplemental essay. If you are admitted to Susquehanna University, you are automatically considered for merit scholarship. Merit scholarship is completely need blind, and it's based off your high school academic performance. Here at Susquehanna, we feel that working really hard in four years of high school, but especially 12 years of schooling, shouldn't just get you into college and then go away. You should be rewarded for four years of really hard work that have gotten you to this point. The highest merit scholarship that we will be giving out um, this year is $38,000 a year. So very, very considerable awards. And this would be before the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, which opened on October 1st. I highly recommend filling that out because you may be eligible after you fill that out for additional need-based institutional aid, as well as federal grants, loans, scholarships, things of that nature as well. So again, $38,000 right off the bat, that is our highest award. However, on average, students are still receiving about $31,000 a year in merit scholarship. As long as you pass all of your classes, that's guaranteed to you all four years. So that is another something that is really, um, that something that students appreciate. We do have three different application deadlines, early action, early decision, and regular decision. Early action is just non-binding earlier deadline um, for students to apply so that they can find out earlier. That's the beginning of November and the beginning of December. Early decision is the binding deadline. If I get into Susquehanna University, that is the only place that I would like to go. That's mid-November for that deadline. And then our regular decision is also non-binding, just a later deadline, and that is in February. Most of our students apply to Susquehanna via early action, so that early non-binding deadline because they want to find out early because Susquehanna has rolling admission notification, which means if you applied right now, you wouldn't have to wait until March to receive your admission decision. Once your application is fully complete, our admission counselors work really hard to get you an admission decision within a month. Um, so, and typically it's a little bit sooner than that. So definitely a very fast turnaround time with that because college and this whole process is already stressful. Why make it even more stressful? Um, so we wanna make that as easy as possible for you. So that way you have as much time as possible to ask any questions as, as informed of the process as you possibly can be. So those were the biggest pieces that I had to talk to you about Susquehanna. Thank you so very much for taking the time out of your evening to sit and listen um, to me talk about Susquehanna University. Again, my name is Nicola Haggerty. I am an admission counselor here. I'm one of six that's located within Pennsylvania. So even if I am not yours, our office works in very close contact. And all of our information is on the website. So you can type in your particular, that you're from Pennsylvania and what county your high school is. And it'll give you all the contact information for your particular admission counselor um, that you'll be able to chat with and ask any questions that you might have of them. But also, like I said, um, I'm going to receive your contact information after this so I can individually follow up with you so you have my contact information as well. But again, I have really enjoyed this time. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to talk about Susquehanna and I really hope to see you on campus in the future because we are open for visits on a limited basis if you would like to come and check us out for yourself. Um, this is actually a picture at Susquehanna behind me. This is of the Susquehanna River. It looks so beautiful. So we would love to have you on campus and we would love to see your application soon and I am going to pass it back to Andrea. Thank you so much, Nicola. I actually found my uh, Seahawks, uh, yeah, Seahawks River Hawks. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so yay. Um, thank you so much for sharing. Um, hopefully our students enjoyed that. I know I did as a fellow um, alum. And just to um, close out today, let me share my screen really quickly. We'll go to the next page or the next slide. Um, there is a quick survey. So when you guys uh, close out, there will be four quick questions. If you could answer those, that would be awesome. Um, all of your feedback is very welcome. Please don't forget to sign up for more sessions. Uh, we have sessions most days between now and November 6th. And if you miss anything today, or there's any other sessions you might wanna attend, please also check the recordings. Um, they are also at the same site. So everything is at pacact.org slash virtual. Check that site out. Everything will be there. It might take um, a few days for recordings to be posted, but they will all be posted there as soon as they are ready. 
So again, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Have a great evening. Thank you so much. Bye. Have a good night.